Hi there, my name is Brian Denlinger from King James Video Ministries, and I want to talk to you today about the house church movement, okay? Starting a house church. What do you need to do? What do you need to consider? And I think uh, if you're watching this video, you maybe you've experienced this, where I know I have, where you wake up on a Sunday morning and instead of looking forward to going to church, you actually dread going. And it's not because you're lazy, it's not because you're not a good Christian, it's because you've been to so many different churches and they're all compromising, they're all getting worldly, they're not preaching, you're not being fed. There are millions of Christians that are going through that right now here in America. Okay, and um, it seems like most places in America you only really have two choices for going to a church and that is first of all you have these huge big mega churches and you go there and they have thousands of people and they have all kinds of programs and all the activities and you know everything and their budgets up into the millions of dollars every year but these churches are also known for big compromises worldly music worldly dress standards and teaching is just so watered down, it's really, you don't get anything out of it. So most true believers will stay away from the big modern church movement. Okay, I'm not saying that, that nobody in the big churches are saved, but I think that the vast majority of them are lost. There might be a few saved people in there that don't know any better. I don't know, but I think that they should eventually get out of there. But then the other option is a little small church that uh, most of them are struggling. Um, they have, they're usually deeply in debt, uh, which kind of goes against Scripture, really, if you want to study that thing out. But usually the pastor or the leadership there of that church, a lot of times they're involved in compromise to try and bring people in and increase the numbers to pay off the debt. So they get messed up. And all the time, at King James Video Ministries here and at our house church, Bible Believers Fellowship, we're getting emails from people saying, where can I go to church? There aren't any in the area. I've tried all of them. I want to hear the Word of God preached. I want, I want to be part of a group of Christians, but there aren't any. What am I supposed to do? Well, that's the purpose of this video. What should you do? Okay, so let's get into some of this. A couple of months ago, actually uh, November of 2009, I preached a sermon at our house church called Seven Reasons for a House Church. And I'm going to be including this sermon CD along with the DVD that you purchased here. And in this sermon, I get into all of the scripture that talks about what a church is and what a church is not. Okay, so I'm not going to cover all the scriptures in this video because I covered it well in the sermon. But I do want to say this. The thing that you have to get straightened out in your mind is, according to the scriptures, according to the Bible, a church is not a building. All right, I have right here a list of all the references to the word church in the King James Bible. I'm going to say more on that in a minute. And there is not one time that church refers to a building. Not one. And that's so important to get when you want to become a house church because it's not the, the church is not the building, it's the people. So where you meet is irrelevant. Okay? Get that thing into your head because that's one of the hardest things for people to break is this traditional mindset. And that's all it is. It's based on tradition. It's not based on the Word of God. And these people have this tradition in their heads that church is a building. But when you really start to look at the thing and you look at the scriptures, search the scriptures, okay? When you start doing that, you're going to see a church is not a building. It's the people. That's so important to get if you want to start a house church. You've got to get that thing straightened out in your mind. So I would encourage you to listen to the message and consider what is being said there in that sermon 
look up the scriptures. Okay? Um, and that's all I'm going to say about it. I'm going to refer to some scriptures as we go through this study. But you need to listen to the sermon because that's according, you know, you need to get the verses down. You need to see what the scripture has to say about the subject of a church. All right. So let's move on to the next section. All right, now you've made the decision, you've listened to the message, you've listened to the sermon, you see that, yes, a church is a group of believers. And where they meet, you can meet in the woods, you can meet in a house, you can meet in a factory, you could meet in a building. I mean, hey, I'm not against church buildings per se. If you can get property somewhere and the people of the church can build something and you yourselves own it, and it's not real expensive or exclusive, well, you know, I'm not really that much against that. What I am against is when people build these huge multi-million dollar temples and they get so deeply in debt that then they have to compromise the Word of God to pay off their building. That is sin at that point. All right? But you've made the decision now. You have made the decision that, yes, I want to start a house church. What's next? Okay? That's what this section is about here. The very first and foremost thing that you need to get fixed after you say, okay, I understand a church is the people, not the building. I'm going to start a house church. Now what? First thing you need to do is you need to be a King James Bible believer. The other new versions, we have a lot of material available at King James Video Ministries to, to study this. The other new versions come from the Roman Catholic Church. The Nestle Alon United Bible Society's text is made under the supervision of the Vatican. It's not about being easier to understand or whatever. The King James Version is the only Bible in English today that's in common use. There are others, the Geneva Bible and some of those others. But this one here is the greatest Bible that has ever been written. And if you want to be a house church Christian, you're going to have to make this your standard. This needs to be your standard. Everything must be filtered through this book. And a lot of people in the house church movement get away from the book and they get messed up. This has to be the standard. Anything that you want to consider for your house church must be filtered through here. What does the Bible say about this? Be careful about the traditions of men. And I'll tell you, when you study the house church movement and you actually start to look at the scriptures and then look at the modern church with all of the things, with all of the, the steeple, the altar, the pulpit being raised up above the people, a lot of that stuff is not in the Bible. It's not there. So some of that stuff, in fact, a lot of it should be abandoned. Okay, and we're going to get, a, get into that more as we continue on here. But do not, another thing you want to avoid is don't fall for religious creeds or books or, you know, constitutions and things like that. You need to form your own set of beliefs according to the scriptures. Don't go off and get some ready-made thing, Baptist confession of faith or Mennonite confession of faith or something like this. Don't mess with it. Be honest and straight about what you believe too, by the way. But don't base it on a pre-made book and try to be part of a denomination and put yourself under a, a denominational name. Again, denominational names, where are they at in Scripture? They were called Christians first in Antioch. You are of Christ. That's why you are a Christian. You should have no other label. Okay? Is it a sin to call yourself a Baptist? No. It's not a sin. But... It's not scriptural. So you're on shaky ground there. And it can lead to problems. Uh, as I said, only the Bible. And I just want to warn you here, I said a little bit about it just a few minutes ago, but I just want to warn you too about books like this one here. This is a very popular book, um, Pagan Christianity. And it's about the house church movement, going back to the way they did things in the first century. And he has some excellent points in here. 
Uh, one of the good points that he makes, I don't remember which page it's on, I don't have it marked here, but he said that the church went out to convert the world, and instead the world converted Christianity. And that's very, very true. When you start to look at the ancient pagan temples and the Roman Catholic temples and cathedrals, and then you look at the Christian, Bible-believing, quote-unquote, Protestant churches, you see that they actually took a lot from the pagans and from Roman Catholicism. And, of course, Roman Catholicism is pagan as well. But having said that, that there are a lot of good points in this book, this guy also uses new versions, which is an immediate tip-off. They're going to get messed up doctrinally. You go from the King James Bible to new versions, you will be messed up doctrinally. But also, he teaches things like female preachers, which I'm going to get into in a little bit. That's absolutely wrong, absolutely forbidden, according to the scriptures. Be careful about some of these books about the house church movement, because a lot of them are written by charismatics. Charismatics are oftentimes not instructed very well in doctrine, in Bible doctrine. And they are very messed up, and they will mess you up as well. And he misquotes scripture in here like crazy. It has, I, I don't recommend this book simply because some of it is, it's not just a little mistake, it's actually heretical. Very serious heresies taught in here. Good information, yes, but serious heresy as well. So be careful about buying materials on the house church movement. Okay, unless they are a Bible believer, a King James Bible believer, Eh, you'd probably do well to stay away from them. So that's my advice. Now let's move on to the next section.